Well, I want to welcome you tonight to Liberty Baptist to the Bryan College uh, Chamber Singers. They have been here once before, and uh, what an enjoyable experience that was. And so it really is our privilege here tonight to just welcome them again. So as they come, why don't you give them a round of applause? Thank you. That's what we're here to do tonight, is to cry out and shout to the Lord, first of all. And uh, we're going to kind of go through a progression of thought in this first half of our program, all the way from call it, calling our Lord holy, because that's what he is, going to the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed, not my will, but thy be, thine be done. And then uh, the tomb stands open wide to end the uh, first half, and that's what all of us Christians rejoice in. The tomb stands open wide. It's empty. Uh, so our next song is Holy.
this next song is highly unusual in that it's completely in 5-4, in 5 meter, which is quite an off, <coughs> off beat for most of us. But these students are so adept at uh, making things sound easy that I don't have much trouble directing them in this. But the, uh, the offbeat really gives it some life to portray the empty tune. take a musical interlude here. While they're doing that, we want to help Ryan College and the chamber singers along. Uh, we're going to take up a love offering for them. If you're not ready to give tonight and you want to give, you can just put Liberty Baptist Church Bryan College, and we'll make sure all the money collected tonight gets to them.
It's very rare that, ooh, there's my voice. It's very rare that uh, I ever have a freshman. In fact, I'm not sure I have it since I've been at Bryan. It's been 37 years um, to, to be the accompanist for the chamber singers because it's such a select group. I usually pick someone who's already proven themselves at Bryan. It's usually a sophomore or junior. But she auditioned for a scholarship, and, and one of the professors said, you, you need to contact her. She's really good. And so we just kind of communicated during the summer, didn't we, Emily? And uh, she finally came over to the college, and we met, and then she became the accompanist. She's just amazing. Let's give her a big hand again. <clears throat> Wonderful. I'm very fortunate. Um, I want to uh, also acknowledge my wife. She's here with me. She's traveling with us, Dr. Sigurd Luther. We both taught at Bryan full-time for 36 years, and uh, she decided to retire completely, and I didn't. <laughs> I, I, she has so much other things, so many other things to do. She's a very busy lady, and uh, I think I would have died. A slow death, you know, over several years <laughs> of not doing enough. But I, I really am very grateful that I uh, did not entirely retire. I kept this group and a few voice students, and I'm so glad because I started this group 37 years ago, and I just didn't want to let them go yet. So whatever the Lord wants in the future for me, uh, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. So we're going to start with our second half now, a little lighter, and I uh, hope you'll enjoy some of the spirituals we'll be singing. And we'll be starting with, Shall We Gather at the River?
Now we're singing something very unusual. We're singing in Swahili. And uh, if you notice on your program, the translation of Bolingo is, So great is the love of the Lord, for this he sent Jesus the Savior. Serve the Lord, and this is the key phrase, and feel the joy. How many Christians in the world don't really feel the joy? They don't portray the joy. They hide it. But the African Children's Choir who started this song, they, they feel the joy and they show it. Hopefully we can do a little bit of justice on this song too. So sit back and enjoy this lively piece. And I want to acknowledge some alums tonight. Our driver of our bus is an alum of Bryan College. And he, he didn't train in, in mechanics or anything. He was a vocal performance major. And uh, Brett Rose, please stand and be acknowledged. Brett, a wonderful bus driver. <laughs> he still sings quite a bit. And, um, but we're very happy that he was able to take time. He doesn't usually drive much. He, his company's quite large, and he wanted to drive for us, so I really appreciate that. And then a very special alum that I didn't expect to see tonight, Susie Schmoyer. Please stand up, Susie. Class of 91. And she was a music major, too. So, And a very special one who's uh, watching us from her dorm room, I think, Alexis Landry because we're live streaming this tonight and she wrote us a note and said she really regretted not being here yet. She's not quite out of uh, her master's studies at Tennessee, at, uh, it's hard to say Tennessee Tech, Louisiana Tech. And we're certainly missing her. So if you're out there, is she, okay, Alexis, we love you and miss you. <laughs> and we wish you were here. So uh, sit back again and enjoy the rest of the program. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows what Jesus So Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah.
Well, good evening. My name is uh, Jonathan Montoya, and I am from Siguatepeque, Honduras. And um, of all places, it is the, it's considered the exact geographical center of the American continent, which is kind of interesting. So I'm from the belly button of the American continent, which is so cool. But which is even cooler than that is Matt has been there, and he has been in my house. And yes, so this is, this is so weird. Because I was standing in the back, and Matt came up, and he was like, dude, you need a haircut. I was like, <laughs> So it's so good to see you. So good to see you guys. And um, the ministry there is going so well. God is really, really growing it. Um, I grew up on a seminary campus. Um, my, we're missionaries there. My family's missionaries. And my father founded and is president of a seminary for expository preaching. And I was saved there in Honduras when I was about eight or nine years old. And what I remember from, from growing up is that besides asking Jesus into my heart every week um, and not really knowing if I was saved, I don't really know if there was an exact date that I was saved, but I do know this. When I was 19 years old is when I first met God. When I was 19 years old is when I knew God for the first time. And my dad invited me to, to go to a preaching lab at the seminary, and he said, why don't you come and audit uh, the two the two week module of of sermons and it's where the senior class is um, is their is basically their final exam they preach a three um, sermon series and and I got to sit in through the whole thing and it changed my life forever and here's how I was walking with Christ but my walk with Christ was intelligent and intellectual not intimate and that was I think that's a that's a a sickness a danger that so many Christians fall into growing up in a, in a Christian home, growing up on a, in church and on a seminary campus as I did. Um, but what I, what I witnessed and what I felt in that two-week module was the power of the Word of God. For the first time in my life, realizing that it was living and had the power to change my nature. The power that no other book, that no other person in the world has is contained in the perfect Word of God in Scripture. And I realized... As Isaiah, when I got a clear glimpse of God for the first time, when Isaiah saw the king, his first reaction was to bow his head and fall on his face and say, woe is me. And that was my immediate reaction. I think it's the invariable, and it has to be the reaction if you truly see God for who he is and all his holiness and all his glory. But then Isaiah goes on further in, the, in, in Isaiah 6 to say, here am I, send me. And that's what happened in my life. And I'll never forget the verse that is in 1 Peter 1, 23 and 24. All flesh is like the grass. The grass withers and fades away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And it is that word, it is through that word that I came to the knowledge of grace. It is through that word that I, that I came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And it is to him that we sing today. And it is because of grace and his mercy that is new every morning that we can sing and, and I pray that our voices would bless you all, but that we, our voices would point you and sharpen your fo focus on God alone, because it is in Christ alone and by grace alone that we can sing and that we can be saved. Amen.
I don't know if you caught it, but it has a uh, dual meaning in that song. First of all, it talked about wandering far from him. He, sometimes we need to be called home to him, like Jonathan was expressing in his testimony. And then the other meaning is, is he's going to call us home to be with him someday. I can't wait to see my grandfather. He led my whole family to the Lord. Without him, I wouldn't be here. My mom and dad were uh, just lost. And my dad was in show business. He had no idea what the, what the gospel was. And my grandfather led him to the Lord, and he led my mom to the Lord, and they all led us to the Lord. I just, uh, I can't wait to be called home. Not yet, not tonight. <laughs> he, he can call me home tonight if he wants to, but, uh, but sometimes I feel like it. Boy, some of these songs just reach me so much. Uh, we want to thank you so much, Mark, Sandra. Wow. Mark is so organized. You're lucky to have that man here. He's just a wonderful, no wonder you've been here so long. Wow, amazing. He just had everything ready for us and uh, the food was amazing, wasn't it, Mark? <laughs> wow, the college students on tour really like to eat, and, uh, but uh, they enjoy good food and you had a wonderful meal tonight. Um, we are uh, on the last song, but we're all on the beginning of our Tour. We had a, a concert this morning in Piney Flats, Tennessee. Anybody know where that is? It's not far from Bristol. You all know where Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, it's a part of, of Bristol, but we had a wonderful service. We're going on to D.C. Uh, we're starting with Richmond tomorrow, and then we're singing uh, some, a real special concert on Tuesday night with the U.S. Army Corps. We've been invited to sing with them in a concert. We're singing a half hour, and then they're singing a half hour, and then we're all singing Battle Hymn of the Republic together. This is going to be amazing, and uh, we're just honored. And I'm especially honored by this because I'm a veteran of the Army, and I sang in the 8th Army Corps in the Pacific during the v Vietnam War. And uh, so this is going to be real special for me. I just can't wait. The students have no idea. These, these men that sing, this is the U.S. Army Corps that sings all over the world. I just, how do we get that gig? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy that we did. But thank you once again for having us. And for you host homes who are taking care of these uh, young people, thank you so much for bringing them into your homes. They'll be a blessing, I guarantee. They will be a blessing. Uh, remember the 93 snowstorm? Does anybody remember that? It came through this area, I believe. We were on tour. The corral was, all 44 of us. And we uh, were in a suburb of Washington, D.C., and we saw snow coming down in the windows during our concert. I said, oh, that's lovely, isn't it? And I didn't see the students after that. They took them to the homes. I didn't see them again for three days. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife and I and the bus driver were snowed in in the hotel, and the kids were snowed in their host homes. And I thought when they brought them back, I said, oh, boy, they're going to say, this has been real. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> but they said just the opposite. They said, can we keep them longer? That's what Brian's students are like. And I'm not sure Alexis is, can show you that in her life. They played with the children and helped cook and entertain and, uh, you know, help cook. And they just had, <laughs> they had a wonderful time. So I, you won't regret having these young people in your homes. But thank you once again for having us here in this beautiful church, this beautiful city, historic city. We really appreciate it so much. And our final song is one we sing every single year since 1991, I believe. Jesus Paid It All by Robert Sterling. God bless you. And don't be afraid to look at our table. Uh, we have some CDs available. Uh, we don't try to make much money. We just try to cover the cost. So we, it, it's a, a wonderful thing to have if you are interested in having a CD of our groups. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. 